Well, hello guys and welcome back to Mr. G Physic, the channel that can help you to improve your marks in physical sciences from grade 8 to grade 12. This is Mr. G and this time we're going to be solving a question on Newton's law. We're going to solve one of the questions of the informal assessment developed by Professor Rodriguez in the Northern Cape provinces and I hope it helps you with Newton's law. This is for grade 12, however, that you start doing Newton's law in the grade 11. So it's a very good question to practice and we're going to start with the question right now. But before, don't forget to subscribe for the channel so you can get the notifications and videos I post on regular basis. This question say a block of mass 16 kg is at rest on a rough horizontal surface. The coefficient of static free and kinetic frictions are 0, 0,3 and 0, 0,25 respectively. A horizontal force of 45 newton to the right is applied on the block as shown in the diagram. Important, you don't know if this force is going to be able to move the object. You don't know that because you don't know how much is the maximum static frictional force. Okay, so that is an important things to note here. We don't know if 45 newton is big enough for the object to move to the right. So question 3.1, state Newton's first law of motion in what? So what the Newton first law state? It states that a body will remain in a state of rest or motion at constant velocity. So objects will remain at rest, remain at rest, or motion with at constant velocity. Constant velocity means straight line at the same speed. That is the meaning of constant velocity. Unless a non-zero resultant force act on the object. Guys, you'll get to mark for the definition. It's a high probability of having the definition in the exams. So please study and learn the definition, okay? Now, question 3.2. Draw a free body diagram for this specific block. So for this free body diagram, we can do it on this left side. This is question 3.2 and it's an important part of, of this work. It's easy and you can get two marks in there. So the object will be a dot. They must remember that one there. And then all the forces are coming away from the dot. So there will be an acting force, applied force to the right. This one is the applied force straight to the right. That one have a little bit of inclination. Let's redraw it straight as straight as I can, that one is the applied force, it's pointing to the right. You has friction, you has friction, I'm going to write friction, I don't know if the object is going to move or not, so I'm just going to write friction, and I'm going to make it the same length as the um, applied force. We have weight pointing all the weight down, this one is weight, and we have the normal force pointing all the way up perpendicular to the surface. So you make sure the frictional force and the normal force are perpendicular to each other because in other words, those will make you perpendicular to the surface. If you do this one, you'll get one mark per force if they are correct. So we have here already six mark out of 17. Question 3.3 and there is where the calculations begin. Calculate the magnitude of the minimum force to put the object of the body in motion. What is the minimum force needed for an object to uh, move? And that is the maximum static frictional force. So I recommend you to write that somewhere in your book. The minimum force needed to put the body in motion or a body in motion is going to be not other thing than the maximum static frictional force. That is what they asking for. Okay, that is the maximum static frictional force. And we're going to calculate that one real fast here at this specific point, all right? So in this question, you're looking for the maximum static frictional force. And there is a formula for this one. So you always will start with the formula of what they're asking you for, because with that one, you get one mark. So it is the product of the static coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal. But we do not have the normal. The normal is not being given to us. Okay, so we are going to calculate the normal. And that is the part when we have to move back to the free body diagram and look what forces or where is the normal allocated. You can see that the normal is in the y 
axis. So the only two forces in the y axis are normal as well as weight. So we're going to work in y axis. In y axis. And in y axis, we know that the net force is equal to zero. That object is not moving um, in the y axis. Guys, this that I did right here is in Newton. first law that is newton first law okay so in this question what we have we have the normal minus weight is equal to zero why is minus well we're going to take up as positive that is entirely up to you but i recommend you to take up as positive in this specific question and therefore normal will be equal to weight which in other words will be the product of mg we can calculate it here we can substitute the whole formula there so if we substitute we have the mass is 16 and 9,8 is the acceleration due to gravity this will give you 156,8 newton quite simple it's a good question to uh, be asked here. So now we're going to substitute the normal in the formula of maximum static frictional force. So we can substitute, let's substitute here in the same place. We have that this one is 0, 0,3, that is the maximum, the, the coefficient of friction or static friction. Um, and then we multiply the normal, we just calculated 156,8. And then the maximum static frictional force is going to be 47. 0 0.04 newton what it means this one you need to apply a greater force than this one to put the object in motion or for the object to start moving that is the minimum force needed that is the maximum static frictional force and this question have three marks one for the formula one for the substitution one for the final answer but the substitution depend on how do you calculate the normal force in here so that is the question 3.3.1 uh, let's solve 3.3.2 and in question 3.3.2 they say calculate the resultant force now we know for this question that is coming that the object is not going to move and this one is question 3.3.2 i'm going to write here object do not move why because the applied force is smaller than the maximum static frictional force that is important all right so so the frictional force which is a static friction will be equal to the applied force so that is important which in this case is 45 Newton that is the magnitude all right magnitude of the force is 45 Newton so we are looking for the net the net force so we can here and we say net force in X we are working in the X direction this is equal to the applied force plus the frictional force in this case is a static frictional force we are working in X in X axis. I like to work organized. I always do it this specific way. So now if we go back to the free body diagram, the forces that we have are going to be friction and the applied force. This friction is static friction. And we're going to take to the right, which is the direction that the object is attempting to move as positive. So we are going to take that direction as positive and it is important when you come here now and you substitute we have that f net in x is equal to 45 plus frictional force which is in the opposite direction is minus 45 and you get that the net force in the x axis is equal to zero newton there we go that is question 3.3.2 well, where are the marks? One mark for writing this formula for calculating the net force, one for the substitution, and one for the final answer. It's a very good question. Now the question say the 45 Newton force is removed and the force of 80 Newton to the right is applied on the block only during four 
second. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the block. Now, what is going to happen? The object is going to move. It's going to move, right? Because the applied force is greater than the maximum static frictional force. So let's write that analogy here. 3.3. Question 3.3, and I'm going to write it just here for control. You know, this is, let's say, data. Okay, you know that the maximum static frictional force is 47, is 47,04 Newton. And you know that the applied force, which is parallel to the surface, is going to be now removed and it's going to be 80 Newton. They change it to 80 Newton. Okay, if you look here, you can see that the applied force is greater to the maximum static frictional force. All right, what does it mean? The object will move. Okay, that is an important data. Therefore, we are going to use Newton's, or we're going to apply Newton's second law to this specific situation here. And we're starting with Newton's second law. F net is equal to M. A. We are going to work in the x-axis. Why in x? In x-axis. Because the object is moving in the x-axis. It's not moving in y. So, what forces are acting there is the same free body diagram. The only difference is that the applied force is now longer, it's bigger. But it's the same. We have applied force and we have kinetic frictional force because the object is moving now. Okay? So, that is important. We have now here the applied force plus the kinetic frictional force. I'm going to write kinetic just for you to see. And that is the equal to M A. I'm not going to substitute the signs yet. I'm going to take it right as positive still, right as positive, but I'm going to first substitute the numbers, okay? However, guys, we do not know the kinetic frictional force. So we have to calculate the kinetic frictional force. Now, how do we calculate the kinetic frictional force? Kinetic frictional force is equal to kinetic coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. Let's write here kinetic multiplied by the normal force. Normal force, we did calculate it previously. So that was an advantage. We have it now with 156,8. So we are going to substitute here to calculate friction. The kinetic coefficient of friction is 0, comma. To five, and the normal force is going to be um, 100. We say 156,8 newton. That is the normal force. There we go. So we can calculate the kinetic frictional force, and that is going to be 39,2 newton. Okay, so we are going to use the kinetic frictional force and substitute in there. Now, remember we say right is positive. Therefore, the applied force, which is 80, is positive, but the frictional force is negative, it's 39,2. And this is equal to, the mass was 16 kilograms, multiplied by acceleration. We're looking for acceleration. This is simple math now. So let's finish with this part here. That is what you have to do. When you solve that part, you will get that the acceleration of the object, the magnitude, they're asking you for the magnitude of the acceleration. The magnitude of the acceleration will be 2,55 meters per second squared. That is the magnitude of the acceleration, guys. It's not that bad. So if you solve this question, the first mark will be for applying Newton's second law. There will be one mark for that one. There will be one mark for the whole substitution. That means that you calculated kinetic energy, kinetic uh, friction, sorry, correct. And one mark for the final answer, which is the magnitude of the acceleration. And then to finish this question, it's a very interesting question here. The same force of magnitude 80 Newton is applied on the block forming an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Will the acceleration now be greater than, smaller than, or equal Two. So, let's quickly analyze that specific question. It's, it's a good question here. Okay, so this one is the new situation. It's the same force, the only difference is that this force have a angle there with the horizontal. Therefore, that force, if we project it to the x-axis, is going to have a horizontal component, which is the applied force in x, 
you can see that that applied force is the adjacent side to the angle. So if we calculate that, it's the applied force multiplied by the cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, when you calculate or you substitute, you get this 80 cos 30 degrees. The answer is now going to be 69,28 Newton. So what we have now here, the force that is trying to move this object is the applied force in the X axis, which is smaller than the force before. So this is smaller. All right, that we will get one mark for saying it's smaller. And now what is happened? Because it's Fx, Fx is smaller than the applied force, that means that the resultant force is smaller. Is smaller. And that is the answer. It's quite simple and quite interesting and a good question. This question has two marks. One for say smaller and one for all this explanation. Guys, this is the end of the video. I hope it helped. If it helped, thumb up, subscribe for the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Mr. G here.